Hey, what's up everyone, Mori Croson here, and today we're gonna to be going over the real reason shin splints happen, and we'll start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't wanna just talk about straight line speed. We also wanna talk about your ability to be quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so I'm making this video just because I have been seeing a lot of people with this issue lately, and it seems like something that's happening a lot within uh, soccer players and track and field. I know there is a lot of people right now that are getting into really the meat of their track and field season, uh, and, and with soccer, I know there's a lot of stuff going on as well. I mean, soccer players are always doing a lot of running and, and having to uh, cut, decelerate, and things like that, and I've seen online a lot of people talk about the reason that shin splints happen is because of overuse and lack of certain strength. I'm not saying that that is necessarily wrong. There could definitely be overuse and there could definitely be the need for the body to adapt to higher level of loads. But there is also a technique that goes into running that ends up being really important. And if an athlete is not running correctly, then they're putting themselves at a lot more risk for injury. And especially if uh, the athlete, either you or uh, son or daughter, is somebody that has been playing sports for a long period of time, particularly any type of field sport or track and field running for a long period of time, and now suddenly is having shin splint issues, I would say it's much more of how it is that they're running than it is their overall load or their recovery. So I wanna go into some of the mechanics that ends up being a big thing to help in understanding how it is that you wanna be able to correct it, as well as uh, maybe a couple of drills, a couple of exercises, a few things to help you and be able to understand what it's going to actually take to fix this problem. Uh, we have two athletes here. This athlete on the right is a uh, sprinter, more track and field. This athlete on the left is a soccer player. And we see kind of two different things here, but they both end up showing the same issue, right? So we'll start with the soccer player. Obviously he's, I mean, both of them had shin splints a little bit on both sides. We could see that they have issues really on both sides of how they're running. But you know, like for him on the right, he has the like a whole sleeve on his right side and there's a really the, the issue here with his running. So you can see how he's landing, right? And this is where you end up having the problem is as you're landing, we want to be really stable with your foot. So you want to be hitting with your foot basically directly under the hip and be landing on more of like the middle to inside part of the foot or with the foot in like a flat position. So what's happening here, you see he's like turning out with his foot and making it so as he's landing, he's landing in like a super supinated position or on the outside part of the foot. And then as he's absorbing, he's absorbing with all of his weight going towards the inside, putting all that pressure onto the outside part of the foot. And he does the same thing here. So you can see how this ends up being an issue for, for both. And on this one, he does a little bit better job of landing with the foot right underneath the hip, which is good. But again, we're seeing more of a supinated position and then having to absorb into pronation, which is going to not only make you more at risk for the shin splint issue, but also make it so you're spending more time on the ground and, and make your overall running mechanics less efficient overall. So this is also making your performance worse as well as making it so you're more likely to get hurt. Now on the athlete on the right, we have more of like the crossover issue happening. So we can see as her foot's coming down, she is crossing over her feet, which means that she's landing with her foot basically right in the middle of her body, right? And so when we want to be landing again with her foot, like right underneath the hip, she's landing across and still also has that same thing where her heel is like facing inwards. We'd want the heel to be facing backwards right here. If anything, I cue people like have a little bit more on the outside part, you know, have your heel facing more outwards just so then it will help in being able to land on more of the inside part of the foot and then absorb towards the outside part of the foot. So a cue that I give athletes all the time is like, you want to think about landing on the inside, absorbing through the outside, not landing on the outside and absorbing into the inside. And again, this makes you more at risk for shin splints. And then if you're playing field sports, it makes you more at risk for ankle injuries. It makes you more at risk for knee injuries. There's a lot of bad things that end up happening when you have a pattern like this, where you're landing. And this one we can see again, she's landing on a little bit more of the outside, but then she transitions. And as she's landing, she's putting a lot of weight on the inside part of the foot. It's not as 
bad on the right side, but we're still seeing this movement where her feet are going inside as she's hitting the ground in comparison to really, you know, we see a lot of the top sprinters, and I've talked about this before, where they're almost pulling their foot out to the side as they're striking the ground. And when your foot's going this way and you keep your foot pronated, right? And it's not like you want to be landing way outside with your foot, but we, again, we want to, it's natural for your knee to come straight through, right? So we get into this position where your knee is like right in line with the pelvis. And then from this position, what we should be seeing is pulling back, right? And so as you're pulling back, when your knee's here and we're pulling back as much as it might feel or might seem like it's a straight back action, it is slightly to the outside. And again, I like to cue going towards the outside because I think that really makes a big difference in people understanding how to be able to land on the inside part of the foot. And then from there, transitioning and, and controlling through the outside part of the foot and then coming right back off. And the big thing to help strengthen this and, and help improve this is gonna be how it is that we're striking the ground, right? So really being able to spend some time and understand how how to be able to properly strike the ground and also just strengthening the arch and getting a little bit more uh, balance and control and an understanding of how to utilize the feet in order to really maximize your performance ends up being the main thing and being able to help you out with the strengthening of the lower half. Now, I do think at the end of the day, you have to be able to improve your mechanics in order to fully address this issue. And I think most people that have this issue are doing one of these two things, either crossing over or landing a little little bit too much on the outside part of the foot or a combination of both and that's what ends up causing the shin splints but there could be some overuse there could be some things that you could do from a training perspective and from a again strength building perspective and we'll go over a couple of those as well first it's going to just be called wall dorsiflexion i'm trying to get my feet and as i progress as far away from me as i can i'm just going to lift my toes all the way up and really control on the way down get a lot of height with the toes here control on the way down then I'm also going to work on being able to strengthen my arch. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get as much height in my arch as I can, right? So I'm here, I'm relaxing my foot, letting my, be, my foot be like nice and flat. And then from there, just trying to get as much arch as I can and then relax back down. I'm gonna do that one more time there. Another thing is just gonna be stretching through there. And so it's important when I'm doing this is I wanna be bending through that back leg and I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping good stability within my ankle. So I don't wanna end up collapsing inwards here. I'm working on being able to shift my weight forward and bend my knee and be able to keep a good stable position within my foot. And I could do that with kind of my heel down as well as my heel up, which will get more of like my toe range of motion there. Another thing here is just gonna be working on being able to get all the way up onto my toe. And then for here, I'm working on being able to get a little bit more to the outside part of my foot. And then I'm also gonna do getting towards the inside part of my foot. And as I'm doing this, I wanna be able to control myself on the way down. I could also do that with one foot down, right? And this is really good to help you in being able to understand how to stabilize as we are running. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is just gonna be jumping onto this foot and being able to absorb through the outside part of the foot. So I wanna be landing on the inside part of the foot and absorb my weight to the outside. And that's what I wanna be doing when I'm running. I wanna be running and landing here with my foot and then transitioning my weight to the outside part instead of landing here and coming in or crossing over with my feet, which is the common thing that I see when people end up having shin splints. I could do this both without having my hand on the wall, right, and keeping all of my, keeping my heel up, keeping my weight coming on the front part of my foot, and just trying to eliminate too much heel bend here, right, and this is gonna be more like an excessive exercise, but it's just really trying to work control. So we wanna make sure that we're addressing that specific issue. Again, we could do that with our hand on the wall, as well as being able to progress to land here, and just being able to make it so that ends up being comfortable. From there, if you could do that well, don't have any pain, then, you should be ready to be able to progress to running. And as always, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can go ahead and leave those down below. Like this video if you like the information and or were able to get anything from it. That really does help us out a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about running mechanics, sprinting mechanics, and just get a better understanding of how to improve as an athlete overall. We're always going over technique breakdowns and giving you guys exercise, giving you guys drills, make it so you can get as much of a understanding of what it takes to be able to improve as an athlete as a runner, as a sprinter, and be able to keep you healthy as well. So again, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.